So, what are my thoughts on Beverly Hills Cop 3? Cyberlab coming back to you with another film review. Uh, not sequel net or like the prequel or the sequel to Beverly Hills Cop 2. Beverly Hills Cop 3. So, how do we start with this one? I remember I was watching, I think it was VH1 back in the day for the older cats. And maybe it was a music video or something, or it might have been in TV. It was either VH1 or MTV. And there was this little, a few clips, and I'm thinking more of MTV. I think I stumbled across it. And it was pretty much like the making of Beverly Hills Cop 3. And... You know, at that point, I didn't really have an opinion about it. I was just like, okay, another one. Uh, at this point, I, I think I had already seen clips and stuff of part two, but it's kind of funny because when I think about Beverly Hills Cop 2 and 3, I think I saw 3 as a whole film. But two was where it was cut up into bits and pieces. And then I came back to it later in life when I really watched all of it, if I can recall. I think. Because I know I had at least seen the majority of the... I knew the film, part two. And I, of course, knew one like the back of my hand kind of thing. Anyway, so with the making of three, I didn't really have an opinion where I was like, oh, I want to see it or I don't want to see it. I was just like, well, it'll be another good cop film. You know, Eddie Murphy. And, but the thing that did catch my attention was in the making, Eddie Murphy said, oh, you know, this film is about avenging somebody who dies. I can't say who it is. And I got scared because I was like, you know, at the time, like movies now, I'm very good at deciphering in a trailer what the film is going to be about. It, you know, just taking, looking at the clips because I'll, you know, watch, you know, a minute or two, I can really kind of get an idea. As long as it's not Marvel where they change things to make it seem this is what the trailer, but the movie's a different I think a different thing. And I got nervous because I was thinking they were gonna kill Billy or they're gonna kill Taggart. Actually I remember at the time I was gonna tell my mom my money was never gonna kill um, John Taggart. Uh, lo and behold he actually wasn't even in the film. But they were gonna kill off the character. And that made me want to see the film to a degree. But I knew my mom wasn't going to take me to see that. That didn't interest her. And it didn't really pull me like, yeah, I want to go see this film. I want to go to the theater. So the film comes out. You know, I didn't know anything about the critic reviews. I never, that was not part of my world with movies. I never paid attention to what people thought of the films and stuff. And, you know, eventually it came out on VHS. We went to Blockbuster. I think I rented that. with Because by this time, I don't think my mom really tripped about radar films like she, you know, I don't think she had an issue with me renting rated R films, depending on what it was, you know. And we wa uh, I watched it, and I didn't feel any way about it. I didn't feel it was good or bad. I was just kind of like, it was a meh film. And it was entertaining, and it was interesting that he went to California, but he went to like, quote unquote, Disneyland. But, of course, it wasn't called Disneyland, but it had, all the, it had all the elements of Disneyland. So, that that was pretty funny. And, you know, it, 
it was just a math film. It wasn't a bad film to me. It was just like a whatever film. It wasn't... I think looking back on it now, even when I watch Beverly Hills Cop 3 now, I just watch it kind of like... I like... I love to see the interaction with... Um, uh, Eddie Murphy and Judge, Judge Rennell. Billy Rosewood. I just love to see their interactions. I think that's the biggest thing of why it gets my attention, just to see their interactions. I'm not saying the film is bad. I'm just saying, um, you know, that that's what I watch. That's what I enjoy. And I think what was missing from the third film, besides the villain, just not... The whole villain aspect that they did just was kind of like, really? You could have done... They could have done better with that. But also missing John Taggart. I felt like, the, like you know, how... Um, they said in the second one, all for one, one for all, like they're the three musketeers kind of thing. I felt like because they didn't have him in the film, it hurt the film. And also, it wasn't really a comedy like it could have been. Of course, I didn't know this watching it. Years later, you come to find out the backstory behind Beverly Hills Cop 3 and how Eddie Murphy didn't really like it or, or that he was going through some different things in his life to where he was trying to transition from being a comedian or... There were so many things they just weren't trying to make it. It just didn't, I guess people felt it just didn't have the Beverly Hills Cop vibe to it. And it, it just was a disappointment for a lot of people. I didn't hate the film. I didn't love it. I'd rank it, of course, after, like, honestly, one, two, and three. I would do one, two, three, like, from top to bottom. It, it just, it was just a meh film. It wasn't a terrible film. It just didn't have anything that got my attention really you know i mean it was cool to to incorporate a little romance in the film for for axel foley because we didn't have that one or two which i gotta say i love the fact that they didn't do that because i feel like not every film needs to have violence not every film needs to have comedy and not every film has to have romance sometimes just get to to what what the the point is about this story it doesn't always have to have a love interest and that's me, but you know, I, I I'm really glad they didn't do that with one and two, and I'm glad they incorporated into three. You know, bring elements into films. Don't always just be. It always has to be this type of thing, especially for what you're trying to do. So my rating for the film, I would give it. I give it three and a three three out of five yes sirs, and the reason I give it three, because I I think if. Judge Reynold was not in this film. I would have probably given this film a one and a half or a two. Because one of the key elements that made Beverly Hills Cop great was having those three characters. Axel Foley, Billy Rosewood, and John Taggart. Having them really encompassed a lot of people from different backgrounds to watch the movie. And, and it's not, not a racial thing, just... You know, I love Billy Rosewood. I like elements of John Terry. I like I, I, those elements when you have them together. And then when you did three, you were missing some of that. And he didn't die or anything. He was just retired. But they should have had him in the film. I think that was a big mistake. Also, the villain, I felt, didn't exhibit... didn't exhibit the qualities of the first two villains. And, uh, and of course, that's not a knock on the actor. I think that's just a script. It just felt like... I felt like the villains were going downhill in regards to menacing it. Because Victor Maitland is just an iconic villain of the 80s. Because he was just... peeling back layers of his behavior. But he was very sophisticated. He was very chill very calm when he made when he made decisions and even they had elements of the second villain uh, doing the same thing but this one it was just kind of like he just didn't have that mannerism about him if you get what I'm saying so would I say watch the film yes watch it if you're gonna watch one and two don't expect much and also don't watch it by itself. Like, if you've never seen one or two, do not watch three. Because then you're going to be like, what the heck is this? It's not. It, it's all over the place kind of thing. But for fanfare, what, if you watch one and two, watch three. Yeah. So with that being said, I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care.